Who loves a competition? I think we all do. However, there's something I want to bring to your attention. There's a competition going on that you probably know nothing about. And this competition definitely includes you because the competition is about you. The competition is for your heart and for your mind. That sounds pretty serious, doesn't it? There was a book written by a man called Edward Bernays. And in this book, he wrote it in 1928. And in this book, he used the term public relations because public relations was a more acceptable phrase than propaganda. And in fact, the book, the title of the book he wrote was called Propaganda. Now, this was back in 1928. And this gentleman, uh, who happened to be a nephew of Sigmund Freud, was involved in many major marketing campaigns for a lot of large companies because he wanted to win, uh, or his clients wanted to win the hearts and minds of people to accept their ideas. So introducing the concept of women smoking, and he made that a very successful campaign to get women to smoke. Uh, it was a very big campaign, very influential, and, and gained terrific results for his client. Maybe not for all the people that smoke. And I was just reading that even though he was promoting, he was marketing, he was campaigning, influencing, conditioning people to accept smoking, at home, he, his, and he's, he was trying to convince his wife not to smoke. And if ever he found a packet of cigarettes, apparently he'd break all the cigarettes in half, flush them down the toilet. Maybe he knew something way back then. Anyway, so there's this competition for your heart and your mind. There are armies of dollars being used in this onslaught to influence, persuade and condition you to think, to believe, to think and to act or not act according to the will of the people that are, are utilising these, these tactics and putting their resources into this place. And to add further fuel to the flame in this, in this discovery or in this um, delving into this area, I watched a doco last night called The Brain is the Battlefield of the Future. And it's a very confronting subject, if you haven't watched this before. And this was all about the weaponization of neuroscience, getting into people's heads, into people's minds, whether it's individuals, communities or whole populations, to sway them to move them in a certain direction. The competition is for your heart and mind. So it's pretty big stuff, especially if you haven't been confronted or exposed to these things before. What do you do? What can you do to protect yourself, to protect your heart and mind from the influences all around you? I mean, how many thousands of marketing messages are you exposed to every day of different companies trying to extract uh, money from your wallet or your bank account. What can you do? Well, here's six tips for you to be able to protect yourself. And this is, this is beginning to scratch the surface of what you can do to protect yourself and your family, uh, your hearts and minds from the influences of these organisations or these governments that are throwing armies of dollars to control you. Here's a couple of things to do. First, be aware that it's actually happening. If you're not aware of, of these things happening, you're, you're just going to get swayed, directed, influenced, conditioned according to whatever uh, is happening at the time. Watch. Okay, so I'll go on to the second one. Is question everything. When you see something happening, when you see a message coming across and your gut says, well, wait a minute, is this message right? Question it. What, what, is, what is the purpose of this message that's being delivered? Question everything. Don't believe everything you see on the internet or in the mainstream media or even social media, for example. 
ask yourself too, when you catch yourself, and this is a self-awareness thing, when you catch yourself doing something that you may not ordinarily be doing, ask yourself, why am I doing or saying what I'm doing or saying? Where did that thought come from? And if it's not something that you'd usually do, ask yourself, where, where did it come from? Where did that thought drop into your head or drop into your mind to influence you to do that? Yeah, it, it is self-awareness. I wonder why I did that. Ask, ask about the deeper purpose of what you're seeing. And this is a really crucial one. Why is, it, why is this message being sent out? And I'll give you a for instance. Okay, just this week uh, it was announced, or Woolworths and Big W announced that they're not going to sell Australia Day merchandise. Okay, that decision wasn't made on Sunday or, uh, sorry, over the last few days, was it? That decision would have been made many, many months ago because of the cycle of, of ordering stock from wherever they get it, probably China, uh, ordering that stock, fitting out stores. Like, There's a lot of logistics in all that. So this was planned a long time ago. And why would they, why would a big company step back from a day of recognising Australia from, for the pride of being an Australian? Why would they step back from that? Okay, they spent millions of dollars promoting the yes, uh, the yes vote and the referendum. I mean, why, why is a big corporate even involved in any of this? Because their, their business is groceries. So <laughs> why are they trying to influence us? So what's the, what's the bigger picture? This is a really important question. What's the, biggest, what's the bigger picture? Why would they want to uh, dilute or weaken our, our national pride? Adam Bant's another one who won't even stand in front of an Australian flag when he gives a press conference. Why is he doing that? So we've got to ask questions. We've got to look, what's the deeper purpose behind these things? Uh, okay, two, two more. So I'm only limited to six because there's other things we can do. Assess what it is that you stand for. What do you stand for? What are your values? What is your identity? What is it that you do and what is it that you do not do? It's worthwhile doing a stock take of this to really put down, empty your mind, put down on paper. Who are you? What do you stand for? What are your values? What are your beliefs? Okay, I take a lot of, I take a lot of pride in being Australian. I take a lot of pride in, in being a man that stands for his values. Now, when you do this, you are going to polarise people. And I think that's something you have to be prepared for. When you, if you stand for something, if you don't, that's what they're saying, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. So know who you are and what it is you believe, what it is you value. And just be prepared that people uh, have all different sorts of opinions and values and beliefs. And you know, because you've written them down, you know what yours are. And so the last tip I have for you is to stick to it. So what you've written down, you've assessed, you've done a stock take of what you believe, what you think, what you do and what you don't do. Stick to it. And that's probably a tough one because, as I said, there's armies of dollars being thrown at you from every direction, government, education, religion, politics, oh, sorry, there. well, there's a few different things going on, marketing and so on. Stick to it. Stick up for what you believe. Stand firmly for what you believe, despite the, despite the onslaughts from different directions. Because you're worth it, your family is worth it, your friends are worth it. Because this is about protecting your heart and your mind, maintaining your individuality maintaining your sense of self and not being pushed and conjoled and influenced and a victim of propaganda. Okay, so 
I'd love to hear your thoughts and your feedback about what I've just shared because it is very, very important. You are worthwhile. You're important. If you weren't important, all this stuff wouldn't be uh, happening. So you, you of, of high value, each of you, regardless of what you think, you are of high value. You are worthwhile. You are important. Now, if you'd like to find out more about how you can protect your heart and mind and be very firm and not influenced by outside forces, then I invite you to put yes in the comments or direct message me if you don't want to put yes in the comments. And we can have a complimentary 30-minute chat about how to strengthen and protect your heart and your mind so that you get the best of life and so does your family. All right, you have a great, a magnificent Monday. I look forward to speaking.